Further exploring 3D associative arrays, what we'd like to do now is look at another example of polar arrays where we can use a concept that are called rows. It's not intuitive for most AutoCAD array users because they think of rows as being in a rectangular array. So what we're going to do is come over here on the roof and work in this ornamental fountain that we're going to build. So we'll zoom in tightly on that. Now what we want to do here is polar array these stepping stones that are going to be in the fountain, but we also want to create another row of them. And to even make matters worse, we want the second row of the array to be 12 units shorter than the first one. So let's see how that's done. We'll go to the ribbon and select our polar array control, selecting the primary object that we want to array. Setting the center of the array here, the middle of the fountain, and we can now see how this is going to be arrayed just as we rough it in. We'll go ahead and use 10 of these stepping stones and we'll array them through a full 360 degrees. At this point, we can insert what's called another row, which you can think of as being concentric to the first polar array that you put in. So we're going to go to two rows and as we see this roughing in, now it becomes a question of what the distance between the rows is actually going to be. So I'm going to go with eight feet. Now at this point, what we said was we wanted the second row of stones to be 12 units shorter than the first one. So what we actually want to do now is apply a downward direction. Remember that elevations apply along the Z axis as we see over here. So we now want to apply an incremental distance of minus 12. And that has the result of sinking them down into the floor, giving us the desired result that we want. Now all we have to do is accept our results and we're done with our array operation. So this is a polar array with rows and elevation offsets. Of course, you can always go back and double click edit and access any of these parameters via the ribbon. And because this complex array is fully associative, it would be very easy to go back and edit any of the properties that you would want to about these stones, not only diameter or height, but materials, color, anything. So it's definitely worth your while to keep the array fully associative. There you go. Polar arrays with rows and elevation offsets.